Hello shooters, today I have something that I think will be a real treat for you and also I'm going to be asking your assistance in solving what has been a, a long time family mystery. For decades this rifle has been sitting in my family's closet and as a kid I was always intrigued by its unique shape and also by how old it was. You can see that it has a handmade trigger guard and trigger as well as a hand tooled barrel and a handmade ramrod. The lock plate is engraved with the British East India Company Rampant Lion Arsenal mark, a crown over two, and that's the inspector's mark, and it's dated 1812. Similar marks can be seen on this beautifully preserved British East India Company new land pattern pistol dated 1813. This similarity also begs the question, was this lock originally from a pistol? What's really interesting about this rifle is that the mother of pearl inlay, uh, it appears to be buttons that were probably from a very formal uh, dress item and that they were split in half and you can see some of the holes that were used in the original buttons for sewing and they were inlaid in some kind of a, uh, a tar or a pitch and um, uh, so this is a unique rifle made for a specific person. It has a 32 inch barrel, was made in 50 caliber and it weighs about five pounds. A little bit about the British East India Company. It was founded on December 31st, 1600, and it rose to account for about one half of the world's trade, kind of like the Amazon of today. It started out as a trading company, but morphed into a colonizing agent controlling vast areas of India. And by 1803, at the company's height, it held a private army of 260,000 men, twice the size of the British Army. As their focus on trade turned to a focus on empire building, the company's influence spread further from India into other of the region's countries, including Afghanistan, where this rifle originates. And with each conflict, British weapons fell into the hands of local insurgents. As reported by Josh Smith for Stars and Stripes, you could call him the original lone survivor. Assistant Surgeon William Bryden was battered, bleeding, and missing part of his skull when he rode alone to the garrison at Jalalabad after surviving the disastrous retreat of the besieged British Army from Kabul in 1842. Made in the dead of winter, the Army's dash for freedom through steep mountain gorges became a nightmarish battle against Mother Nature and the Afghan fighters who used handmade Jazail muskets to snipe at the column of 16,500 troops and camp followers. The Afghans joined a list of local peoples around the world who, against all odds, would use irregular tactics to inflict losses on better equipped forces. If the retreat from Kabul symbolized colonial British folly, the Afghans' Jazail firearms came to symbolize the homegrown skill and tenacity that would earn them a place among the great guerrilla fighters in history. Often made of parts from cannibalized British weapons, Giselles were a hodgepodge of Eastern and Western designs, each one unique and often decorated. And as noted elsewhere, Giselles were far more accurate with up to five times the range than the standard British Army issue Brown Bess. So, I think this is an Afghan Giselle, but I'm not sure. And if anyone watching can help me solve the question further by commenting below, I'd appreciate putting a family mystery to bed once and for all. Thanks.